Hey everybody, Dr. Ray Blue here, and this is my movie review of I Am Not a Serial Killer, directed by Billy O'Brien and based on the book trilogy by Dan Wells. Set in a town in the Midwest, we follow a teenage boy with sociopathic tendencies and all the warning signs of a potential serial killer. Not a certainty, but some major predictors for serial killer behavior as pointed out by his therapist. Bullied at school and an outcast in general, like many of the coolest adults were in high school, John Wayne Cleaver, a perfect name for a serial killer, deals with his violent tendencies and urges to kill, like many of the coolest adults had to do in high school. Anyway, he does his best coping with these drives and has learned to control them by smiling and saying something nice whenever his dark urges arise. John, played by Max Records, who you may remember from the film Where the Wild Things Are, comes to find out his elderly neighbor, played by Christopher Lloyd, is in fact a serial killer. And not just your run-of-the-mill serial killer, but one with bizarre and shall we say supernatural abilities? Without giving too much away, Lloyd's character could have been a bit more explored, but we see a glimpse into his life and loving relationship with his wife, as well as an almost odd friendship with John. John goes through the motions of having human relationships, for the most part just to seem normal and fit into society as best he can. While really not caring what people think or relating to how they feel, this includes the relationship he has with his mother, who owns a funeral home where John performs the music for funeral ceremonies, as well as assisting his mother in preparing the dead bodies, including the victims of the killer. Likely not the best environment or influence for a potential serial killer, but hey, a job's a job. The film keeps a creepy dark tone and atmosphere similar to what one may expect from 80s horror films. However, unlike many films of this genre, it adds an interesting science fiction feel that keeps the viewer more curious and the story much more mysterious than your usual flick about killers. The cast all do a pretty good job in the film, though no one really stands out as an amazing performance. Overall, the story is fairly simple and the movie keeps a good pace in telling it, though without spoiling the end could have been a little more exciting. The film does add a new twist to your typical horror movie, tackling inner demons and mass murder, but could have gone much deeper into the potential mental illness of John, as well as could have expanded much more on Christopher Lloyd's own inner demon and the reason behind his actions and history of his character. I really enjoyed the movie and think the idea behind it was pretty clever and fairly unique. However, it can be a little monotone. While it could have gone a little deeper into character and development, it definitely ventures into unexplored territories and had a fairly unique theme. All in all, I found it very entertaining and, if anything, just wanted to more from it. I ordered this from Video On Demand as a huge fan of pretty much anything that Christopher Lloyd does and must say I was glad to have done so. Well worth the $6.99, which is more than I can say for the other movies I've spent much more on seeing. If not ordering it on demand, it's definitely worth watching if appearing on Netflix or at your local Redbox. It may not be a mandatory addition to your home movie collection unless you're a true die-hard Christopher Lloyd fan, which I tend to be, but certainly a well-made independent film worth seeing. Thank you for watching. Please comment below with your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends and help spread the madness.